our first point of the evening has to be your Oregon Ducks eking one out over Ohio State. Ohio State flew in from Columbus. It was a back and forth game, a very evenly matched game for my money. And Oregon came out in front 32 to 31. They were about a three point dog, but for all intents and purposes, Vegas had them pretty even. Yes. What is your takeaway from this? I mean, I hear your voice, whether you were alone or not, there were definitely some shouts at the TV. Yep. And I'm sure people who are listening at home, people maybe who are watching us live, were in a very, very similar situation. Um, but what was it like to watch this game as a fan of a team playing in it? It was a roller coaster. It was an absolute roller coaster. It was Dylan Gabriel's best game as a duck with his fearlessness downfield, right? The, there were so many more positives to Dylan Gabriel, punctuated perhaps by that touchdown run late when he had the keep, when JT Tuamalu crashed down on Jordan. I think it was Jordan James. Um, but what he was able to do with Evan Stewart downfield, what he did with Tez Johnson, uh, it was remarkable. Uh, finding Terrence Ferguson the way that he did, the way that this Oregon game went was kind of rocky otherwise. They survived some big plays from Ohio State, namely the, the long Trey Henderson run early on in the game. And then some big catches from Jeremiah Smith and, uh, I mean, the whole host of receiving core for uh, for Ohio State. G. Scott had, you know, a couple huge catches at the tight end spot. Um, look, the, the positives from Oregon are obvious that they were able to get stops, that they were able to, you know, make timely plays. And the negatives were that they're still not a buttoned up team. This is still not a finished product. I thought, by and large, Ohio State did not shoot itself in the foot as much as Oregon did with the bad snapped extra point, the the bad two point conversion, you know, trying to make up for that fact. Treshawn Holden, one of Oregon's best receivers, the number two or three receiver. Spit uh, in the face of a defender. Spit in the face of a DB for Ohio Jeez. State and get ejected when Oregon was deep into a, a scoring opportunity. Ohio State is a terrifying team, and it's so obvious why. It's so obvious the speed and skill with which they play on both sides of the ball. I just, I couldn't believe the ending of that game. So Oregon, one, has 12 guys on the field, but the clock still goes. Um, <laughs> and Will Howard just sort of with the clock running, with the, the clock running near the end of the game, with the clock running before the second to last play, it was just a lot of Chris Berman tick, 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 tick. Yeah. And he, he knew it, it seemed, but the offensive line sort of seemed to be going through the motions and he couldn't sort of get everybody on the same page. And then with six seconds left on third and 20, desperate to get into field goal range, he ran for it with nobody open and ran a little bit too long. And by the time he slid, time had run out and the Oregon sideline and all of Autzen Stadium seemed to collapse on the field. I couldn't believe Oregon was able to weather the issues that they weathered. I was furious that they didn't even get a review with that interception on that opening oh. drive. Crazy. Where didn't even get a review. It was, by the way, brilliant tactical move, super savvy from Chip Kelly to go tempo, 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 don't give them time. And the refs, even though everybody at home is watching that at the very least, is like, ooh, we should take a closer look. This is a little bit strange and different. Uh, the refs are like, well, we got to keep playing. It's football. I don't know. Um, and then the rest of the game, they seem to be okay in terms of whether or not a play should be reviewed or not. But that was kind of wild to watch. Yeah. Um, Oregon made a ton of plays. Oregon didn't just belong on the field. Oregon won in, in uh, you know, other than maybe rushing the passer, Oregon was, they were electric on their biggest night of the year. What I found interesting about this game is actually when yeah. we did our preview, a lot of what we said in that moment came to fruition. Uh, a lot of what we were seeing going into this game is what I think we're going to talk about coming out of it, right? One of the yeah. big... One of the big points of interest for us was, is Oregon going to try and go downfield through the air? And they did yeah. frequently in this game. That was part of why they had the success that they did. I thought, to your point, Dylan Gabriel looked like a completely different quarterback in this game. He looked like the Dylan Gabriel that I think I've been expecting throughout the first month of the season, the one that we have seen yeah. four years running now at various schools around the country. I thought Dylan Gabriel looked really, really solid 
341, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And had time, by the way. Had the Oregon time. offensive line protected him, which has not always been the story this year. Was able to buy time himself when needed, but on those longer developing downfield throws, he was protected. You know, this vaunted Ohio State secondary, I still think is excellent, but they haven't seen receivers like what Oregon brought to the table. No, it just – it. I, I think what I – come away from this game feeling most is yeah. how much better Oregon looked compared to the other games of theirs that I have watched. I don't mm. know if they were just waiting for the big game. I don't know if they're the opponent snob the way we have. Well, they de they definitely weren't taking shots against inferior secondaries to Ohio States the way that they were taking shots on Denzel Burke, et cetera, Caleb Downs, et cetera, Lathan Ransom, et cetera. They weren't doing that to Boise or UCLA with that kind of consistency. No, and and you know, I'm not I'm not a conspiracy theorist in so far as I tend to think these teams are holding a lot back in some of those games. I'm sure there are some things that they hold back, but yeah. It, this just felt very drastically different to me. It felt drastically different. It definitely seemed like they were up for this game and good for Dan Lanning to get the monkey off his back. I mean, they were yeah. reading the stats aloud through the broadcast about you know, some of his troubles against top five teams. Yeah, Did they squeeze Washington. that in between Jeremiah Smith praise? Did they, <laughs> were they, it was, it was Noah Eagle, Todd Blackledge and the, the Jeremiah Smith spectacular continue. There was a lot of Jeremiah Smith love. Yeah. Um, and look, there's plenty of talent to go around the Ohio state side of things. Sure. Um, I, I am very curious to see what our Verballer top 12 poll looks like with respect to Ohio state being. So this is a 32 31 final do Oregon and Ohio State just switch spots in our poll? Do they just switch spots in the AP poll? How far sure. do you drop Ohio State, I think, is a real question. Unranked, yeah. Yeah, not that it really <laughs> matters that much in the grand scheme of things because we've got half a season to go, and Ohio State's going to win most, if not all, of their remaining games. But um, for sure, this is one of those matchups that I think we had circled coming into the year, and it helps us answer some of the questions now in the Big Ten. Um having seen them on the same field, having seen how, I think, level the game felt for a good chunk of the way through. I thought Will Howard, by the way, was was excellent. I thought he was in, really, really strong. Yeah, Excellent in this he game. He got a little bit, you know, he heard footsteps a little bit in, in the pass rush, even though he had time to step in and throw. You could see that he, he was, that the feet got a little happier as the second half wore on. But when he had a chance... To plant and throw he was yeah. accurate he was very accurate and there were some dimes that he was able to deliver in this matchup that um i i just i was really in awe frankly on both Terrifying. sides of this thing so it was a Terrifying. great game as an oregon human knowing the receiving core and pass catchers and running backs quinshawn judkins did nothing that was crazy impressive from oregon but you know i was holding my breath anytime it was Abuka or Jeremiah Smith or Trey Henderson, a G Scott, anybody of these guys in the open field, even a little bit. Um, and Oregon, for what whatever it's worth, they kept it, they kept that offense for the most part in front of them.